uh, it's Kenny Aronson. Hey, Kenny, how's it going? Uh, it's going really good. All How right. are you, Jason? Jason is doing very good, and uh, Kenny Aronson is awesome to talk to you and uh, see that you guys got uh, dust coming out again, you know, on CD. This is going to be good product. Absolutely. Who decided to make these reissues and stuff like that for dust? Um, you know, I, uh, um, to be honest with you, the whole thing happened really fast. Um, basically, um, I really heard it originally from Marky. Uh, uh, he's got a, his, his buddy is involved, uh, with Sony Legacy, a good friend of Mark's, uh, another, another Mark, this is a, uh, Mark Newman, and um, basically just told me that uh, what was going on, and, and next thing I know, uh, we're up at the offices, uh, you know, talking uh, up at the, you know, they, they were just, uh, they booked a mastering session to remaster it, uh, started showing the ideas of, of the packaging, and uh, I went to the mastering session, and, and it was really, really cool, and um you know, it just it just sort of happened really fast. I mean, I, I didn't really know, you know, it was just kind of, I mean, I think I think Marky had been trying to get some interest in this in a while. And in fact, he actually had some mastering done. This is Marky Ramon, Mark Bell. Mm. He had he had actually uh, had somebody sort of do some volume maximization. Uh, on on the original on, on on some of the CDs, uh, but but uh, those Sony Legacy people actually got the original tapes. Um, they were somewhere in a vault, um, and they found them. And uh, so we remastered the uh, Marky Marky Ramon Marky Bell and I both remastered you know attended the mastering session of the actual master tapes, uh, and then they. You know, did some modern, a little bit of modern mastering to it, just to kind of, you know, they opened up the high end a little bit, had a little bit of low end. They fixed some some stereo balancing issues that I had not remembered were there, but the engineer pointed out some interesting things. You know, it was pretty cool to, to be there and watch them do that. Now, this is going to be uh, mastered on vinyl as well. You know, you're going to go yeah, in that so route. Yeah, so it's coming out on uh, on vinyl. Apparently, um, it's going to be numbered. Um, I think the vinyl release is first, and then uh, there's going to be CDs released as well. Now, this should be a very good thing, you know, for the the people today, you know, that never even heard of Dust, you know, the the kids that are into this music. You know, when well, I know it's uh, there's all this renewed interest, and I, you know, I, to me, I mean, it's it's really exciting, um, because it just sort of came out of nowhere to me, anyway. I mean, and it's, God, how many years later, you know, and uh, and it'll be interesting. I still have original um, vinyl copies. I I think I have some that I maybe never even opened. Um, but I would like to compare the two, you know, the old one with the remastered one, just to see what the difference is. And and uh, I think it's, you know, I think it's really cool. I'm really excited about it. I'm glad people are interested in it. I never thought, um, you know, it's my first band that I was ever in. So a lot of times, if I listen to the to those albums, to me, I I hear like the kind of bass playing I did back then, and I'm so different as a player today, it shocks me to hear what I did. And and a lot of times I sort of uh, get too hung up maybe on the things about it that I don't like or, you know, just stuff that, you know, I look at the blemishes more... Right. Um, then I think about how the music really affected people, and I'm I'm only you know I'm hearing all this renewed interest now, so I it surprises me that people uh, are liking it so much. You know, I just, I never thought it really would affect people that way. So it's really cool. Uh, it's a real nice feeling, and it's an exciting, and it kind of gives you a, a sense of redemption after all these years that this thing that you did as a kid 
you know, you just, uh, you know, just seeing how it affects people at this point in time, it's, it's really great. And I'm sure there's going to be maybe a slight difference, you know, from the original vinyl pressings, because usually when you do get the first pressings, aren't they as good, you know? Certainly on vinyl, when they're good qualities, they, uh, it's going to be interesting to see the new records. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to hearing it. I mean, it sounded great, like I said, when we were doing it in the mastering studio. I mean, basically, <clears throat> the concept was, because people who are into, you know, the, the people who are really into this, uh, whole concept of, you know, well, Sony Legacy, I mean, they, they've released a lot of things. So, I mean, the idea is to stay true to what it was, but just, you know, give it a little modern cleanup, so to speak. Maybe open up the high end a little bit, a little, make it a little bit clearer. Uh, maybe fatten up the low end a little bit because back in the day, things were mixed differently. People's concepts about low end and on the recording were different. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so the idea wasn't to certainly remix anything or make it different than what it was. It was just to take what was there, be true to it, but just kind of, uh, you know, spruce it up a little bit EQ wise, just to the mastering process. And along with this, uh, are we going to see maybe possible dates at all, you know, to promote this? Well, you know, uh, you mean in terms of shows? Yeah. You mean in terms of the band playing? Sort of a rendition of the songs? Um, well, Richie Wise no longer really plays guitar anymore. So, yeah, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't put the original band back together if, if we wanted to. Uh, Mark and I, you know, threw around the idea that if we found somebody that was really interested in in doing those tunes and, and singing them and uh, you know maybe if we could find someone perhaps that had somewhat of a name right. and uh, was interested in getting together with us and putting something together to see if it was feasible I suppose you know anything is possible but somehow I just don't think that's going to happen and 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 I I sort of believe that well I don't know if it's something that I believe in but I just feel in my heart of hearts that you know that was then and it was great for the time and we were kids and it was the first thing that we did and it was a really great launch pad for our individual careers you know so so to speak and. Um, uh, I just don't feel, you know, I, I don't know if it's so good to try to resurrect something or or go back and try to do that again, really. I, I, I think it's just better that it's, it stays there for what it is. And I think it's great that it's being made available mm -hmm. and there's uh, seems to be a fair amount of interest in it. And I think that's cool. And uh, I think it's great that younger people that are into that genre of music uh, can discover it and hopefully enjoy it. I mean, one of the things that makes me feel really good is when uh, bass players will say, wow, man, I heard, you know, those Dust records, and it's part of the reason why I play bass, man. And, you know, it's, that's a real nice feeling to me if someone says that. And, uh, you know, I think that's all good. But, I, you know, as far as putting it back together and trying to do it live, I, I don't know if, if that's really... If that should even be, <laughs> you know. Well, it's just you know, question everybody's got to ask sometimes, and you know, that's the answer. I mean, again, if we found the right person, you know, that could be that third person to play and sing the music. I mean, and and if it felt right, well, then that's a whole other, that's a whole other ball game. But until that happens, you know, it's it's really you know, with, without that person. It just can't happen. And, and Richie is, you know, retired, you know, from all that. So, you know, he's he's completely out of the picture in terms of, you know, that's not something he would is even interested in at, the, in the, at this point, you know. But it's it's fine. I, I just think that uh, I think it's exciting that it's being re-released and people are into it. You know, I, I makes me feel really good about it. What I do enjoy really about, let's say, the the recordings and stuff, it's 
today is going to reintroduce that classic sound that you know you can't even achieve today with equipment. Would you say that's good uh, yeah, sense? Yeah, I, I think it's that, well, yeah, I mean, it's, when I listen to that record, and it, it's so simple, basically, compared to, like, records today, you know, um, and, and the way records are mixed and mastered, you know, they sound super loud, even at a very low volume. Um, which, you know, could be exciting sometimes, but I think it could also be mixed. I think records today could be very tiresome uh, psychoacoustically just because they're very in your face. Uh, you know, the whole concept of dynamic range and recordings today is just so different <clears throat> from back in the day. Um, yeah, and you know, we played around with the idea of maybe trying to get more of that in the remastering, but we just said, nah, you know, it shouldn't be. It should be it should be what it is, because it was done back in that day. We did it on a 16-track, maybe a 24-track tape recorder. Uh, you know, there's minimal effects on it. Uh, you know, you had the effects of the day. You had a, an echo chamber or a plate echo, mm. and you had some tape echo, you know, and... Uh, you do a little overdubbing of some vocals and stuff, but when I listen to those records, they're very, um, they're, pr they're pretty minimal, you know? It's a uh, minimum of overdubs, you know? It's, uh, it's, and, it, and it really does harken back to, a, to, a, to an earlier time, no doubt. And the sound is great, you know, for what you're describing, how it was recorded, you know, it's it's presenting itself very good today, and uh, I like it a lot, you know, the sound quality. Yeah, well, I, no, that's great, and, and I think I think, um, I think you'll find that the new one is going to be the same, you know, I mean, not much change, I mean, we didn't remix it or anything, but it's going to have a nicer, sweeter, a little clearer, higher end to it, um, and it's going to have a nice, a uh, little bit warmer... Uh, a little bit lower and warmer low end to it, which, which it needed. And it was funny because when when we were listening, when we were in the mastering studio with the engineer, and, you know, we were just taking song to song and listening to stuff. It's really funny how, like, um, for some reason, on one of the songs, I can't remember which one now, but we were sitting there listening, and, you know, in the mastering studio, you hear everything because the quality of the of the equipment that they have i mean you know the high-end amplifiers you know powering these incredibly clear loudspeakers that you could just hear everything and um and uh we found that on one song one channel like it was the right side uh was significantly lower for some reason um i don't know who whose fault that was uh, what it was originally mastered or something the the mixing engineer uh, overlooked, but there was one side that was, and, and you know, we were able to fix that. So um, the problem with that track was things sounded like they were not balanced properly in the stereo field. Mm -hmm. And when we, cre uh, when we uh, fixed that, when the engineer found it and fixed it, it just sort of rebalanced the whole track. Uh, but I, you know, I never really knew that or remembered that there was an issue until we, we heard it at the remastering session. Some corrections, but stayed, it stayed, you know, true to the original recordings. Part of me would love to grab, the, I mean, if I, I would love to be able to get the original multi-track tapes and remix them just for the hell of it. I mean, have I, if I had the money and the facilities to do it and I was able to find those those multi-track tapes. I think it would be interesting to remix it, but of course, what we're putting out, you know, it's it's right for what it is. And do the original multi-track tapes exist today? I'm not sure about that. I I don't know if they if they they sound the masters, but they I don't think they sound multi-tracks. But I'm still going to inquire about it just for the hell of it because I'm really curious. That would be a great idea, and you know, to see yourself what's what's in there, maybe something missing out of it. Maybe you never know. I know, you know, it'd be really, it'd be really great to 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 check out those multi-track tapes and go back to to you know, really those original sessions. But uh, you know, but for now, it is what it is. So.
but it, it's good. I'm, I'm real, you know, I, I think it's going to sound good. I think the package looks good. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I hope, uh, you know, people really enjoy it, you know. I'm I sure they will. I can't wait to listen to it and get a copy myself, so. Now, Kenny, are you keeping busy besides this with New York Dolls and yes, bands? Yes. Um, I've been working with a singer-songwriter for many years named John Eddy, who's, uh, who uh, I've been with now for, for a long time. Uh, he's a, a, a singer-songwriter based in Jersey, although he, he moved down to Nashville a few years ago, and he got involved with writing down there. And he's actually doing very well. Uh, Kid Rock has recorded uh, about three of his tunes, and he's got a, uh, a number 17 uh, 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 record song out on the country charts. Uh, with with some newer artists whose name I'm, I'm not quite sure I can't remember there's a lot of a lot of those new country people out and uh, so so I work with this guy I do a lot of session work on the side in fact I got a session tonight in New York City uh, I'm producing a young band from New Jersey called the Micro Machines they're like 16 years old and they play really well and they got this little girl playing bass who's really cool and I'm gonna take them into the studio and record a CD with them. And uh, I've been working with uh, Sylvain from the New York Dolls. We uh, just played last night in New York. And, um, you know, different things. I'm just, just keeping busy, man. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a bass player that has to play, you know. And uh, so, you know, I, I, I like to work and I like to keep busy. And I record my own music at home. And, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm just uh, doing all kinds of stuff that comes up and, you know, just different things I like to do. We'll keep up that resume because it's looking good up to now. Yeah, so far so good. I got a couple of things that I hope might might work out uh, in a little bit uh, on in the year, but I unfortunately I can't mention it right now because I'm not sure, but it could be interesting, something for me that uh, uh, hopefully maybe get a chance to work with a certain artist um, and uh, maybe go to Europe. Uh, for some work, but uh, I'm still waiting on hearing that, so I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm I'm always trying to you know stay on top of stuff and just keep busy. And you know, I, I'm a player. I love to play. I still love performing in front of people. So you know, live music. I I you know, I, that's what I do. You know, I that's what makes me happy. I have to keep doing that. You know, and and I still travel. You know, I don't mind going on the road. You know, I enjoy getting out there and working and playing in front of people. And it's great when you're in front of audiences that want to be there and listen to what you're doing, and, and that's that's the beauty of it. That, that's what I do. So I hope that I could just keep doing that. Well, Kenny Harrison, I'm sure you you are, because uh, keep up the great work also. because you, you're, Thank you very you're much. Very I stuff. really appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk to me. It's, it's a really nice feeling to... Uh, you know, be able to chat about all this stuff, and and uh, I hope I hope people enjoy it. I'm sure they will, Kenny. And uh, let's just say you have a great, excellent year, and uh, we'd love to talk to you again in the future when we got new products out. Thank you very much. Right. Absolutely, and perhaps we can uh, we'll we'll meet up one of these days. You never know. So, thanks again. You're very welcome, and keep up the good work. Thank you, and have a great day. You as well.